Okay, C, A, A, reason. Part C, A, A, reason, has three parts. A, observing reason, B, active reason, or the actualization of rational self-consciousness through its own activity, and C, practical reason, or individuality which takes itself as real in and for itself. First, a summary of the whole. Reason as all reality wants and expects to see itself in everything. So, it begins in theory as observing reason seeking to see itself in nature and the self in the form of classifications and laws. When this proves to be impossible, reason then shifts to practice and tries to see itself in others and realize itself through its own actions. The final result is an individuality fused with universality, UI, which becomes the immediate ground and starting point of the next section, BB spirit, the ground of all that has preceded, an actual historical nation or ethical substance, Reich Gottes, or the kingdom of God, the Jedi Order. Hence, we move here in B and C from a natural self-seeking individual to a universal ethical individual. Now, part A, observing reason, itself has three parts. A, observation of nature, inorganic and organic. B, observation of self-consciousness, logical and psychological laws. And C, observation of self-consciousness, physiognomy and phrenology. Our four questions here and their brief answers are the following. One, what is the connection between the minister, priest, the middle term, and reason certainty of being all reality and all truth? In brief, the minister, by act of pardon and forgiveness, brings together into a unity the two extremes, the believing monk or unhappy consciousness that has renounced, negated itself, its will, and the distant, unchangeable God, reality the point. This unity Hegel calls reason, the certainty that consciousness is all reality. Important is that, quote, the negation of the individual, the monk, is the universal, God as all reality, end quote. Two, how does reason's attitude toward the world differ from that of the preceding pre-medieval and medieval shapes? In brief, the shapes of the freedom of self-consciousness view the world as opposed to its freedom and wanted to negate it in its transiency. Reason, on the contrary, is interested in the world's permanency because as all reality, it knows it will find only itself in the world. Three, why does reason find it hard to discover classifications and laws in nature and self-consciousness or mind? First, A, observation of nature, inorganic, organic. As a side note, we will see here exactly how modern science started and continues to this day. In brief, after the medieval's age of faith, the scientific revolution and age of reason came on the scene as the quest to discover order, universals, laws, and reason in nature. In effect, to bring the infinite variety of sense individuals into unity. 
Now the problem with classification into kinds were the exceptions and anomalies, individuals, specimens that were neither plant nor animal, etc. The problem with finding laws which require universality and necessary connection was that experiment and induction from a few examples could only yield probability, never universality and necessity. And there is no necessary connection between, for example, the concept of water and the structure of fish. As in the law, organisms in water have the structure of a fish, etc. Second, B, observation of self consciousness, logical and psychological laws. In brief, logical laws. These are the laws of thought or formal logic, e.g. of identity, non-contradiction, and the excluded middle. The problem is one, observation just finds these laws, which at most show how we do happen to think but not why we must think in these ways. Necessity is lacking. And two, observation also regards these laws as separate from each other. And this contradicts the unity of the eye or mind. Psychological laws of social psychology concern why a person acts or is the way she is, in short. There can be no necessary laws correlating or linking a person's behavior to the social world and society's norms, customs, and habits because a person can either freely choose to conform or not to conform to its norms. Third, C, observation of self-consciousness, physiognomy, and phrenology. In brief, Physiognomy and phrenology both claim to have laws linking the outer and the inner, self-consciousness, mind, and its body. Physiognomy with a person's face and hands, phrenology with a person's skull, its shape and features. Both are for Hegel pseudosciences. The problem is that the physiognomist is not able to observe or perceive a person's inner self, only her face, and the phrenologist is in the same situation. Hence, the inner and outer correlations they make are just their personal opinions, not scientific laws. Four, the result of C and this whole section is just that self-consciousness, the I, is a thing, a skull. What does this mean? In brief, it means that reason or the category is realized as the unity of subject and object, of self-consciousness and thing, skull or being. Hence the I, or self-consciousness, is all reality or everything I see. Thus, the new object is self-consciousness, that is, another self-consciousness. Reason shifts from theory to practice and again to the interpersonal sphere. From trying to find itself in the world to trying to produce itself by its own action. For example, the man on the make via pleasure, hedonism, and seduction, C.F. Faust and Gretchen.